Saturday, the 22nd of June, 2024, of the 11th week in Ordinary Time, is the optional memorial of Saints John Fisher, Thomas More, and St. Paulinus of Nola. Welcome to Daily Scripture and Meditation with Shirley Celis Jackson. We begin, as always, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A loud cry in the ears of God is that ardent affection of the soul which says, O oh my God, my love, you are mine, and I am am all yours. Daily Prayer Lord Jesus, free me from needless worries and help me to put my trust in you. May my first and only concern be for your glory and your kingdom of peace and righteousness. Help me to live each day and moment with trust and gratitude for your providential care for me. Amen. Introduction to the Liturgy of the Word Saint Paulinus of Nola, a native of southern France, Paulina served as governor of Campania in Italy. After his conversion, he and his wife, Teresia, settled at the shrine of St. Felix at Nola. They founded separate monastic houses for men and women to serve pilgrims and take care of the poor. Paulinus was elected bishop of Nola in 409. He counted among his friends St. Jerome, Ambrose, and Hilary. To St. Augustine, whom he never met in the flesh, Paulinus wrote, It is not surprising if, despite being far apart, we are present to each other, because we are members of one body. We have one head. We are steeped in one grace. We live on one loaf, we walk on one road, and we dwell in the same house. Paulinus died in 431. The Epistle They murdered Zechariah between the sanctuary and the altar. A reading from the second book of Chronicles, chapter 24, verse 17. After the death of Jehoiada, the princes of Judah came and paid homage to King Joash, and the king then listened to them. They forsook the temple of the Lord, the God of their fathers, and began to serve the sacred poles and the idols. And because of this crime of theirs, wrath came upon Judah and Jerusalem. Although prophets were sent to them to convert them to the Lord, the people would not listen to their warnings. Then the Spirit of God possessed Zechariah, son of Jehoiada the priest. He took his stand above the people and said to them, God says, Why are you transgressing the Lord's commands so that you cannot prosper? Because you have abandoned the Lord, He has abandoned you. But they conspired against Him, and at the king's order they stoned Him to death in the court of the Lord's temple. Thus King Joash was unmindful of the devotion shown him by Jehoiada, Zechariah's father, and slew his son. And as Zechariah was dying, he said, May the Lord see and avenge. At 
the turn of the year, a force of Arameans came up against Joash. They invaded Judah and Jerusalem, did away with all the princes of the people, and sent all their spoil to the king of Damascus. Though the Aramean force came with few men, the Lord surrendered a very large force into their power because Judah had abandoned the Lord, the God of their fathers. So punishment was meted out to Joash after the Arameans had departed from him, leaving him in grievous suffering. His servants conspired against him because of the murder of the son of Jehoiada the priest. He was buried in the city of David, but not in the tombs of the kings. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 89 Responsorial Verse Forever I will maintain my love for my servant. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David my servant. Forever will I confirm your posterity and establish your throne for all generations. Forever I will maintain my love for my servant. Forever I will maintain my kindness toward him, and my covenant with him stands firm. I will make his posterity endure forever, and his throne as the days of heaven. Forever I will maintain my love for my servant. If his sons forsake my law, and walk not according to my ordinances, if they violate my statutes and keep not my commands. Forever I will maintain my love for my servant. I will punish their crime with a rod and their guilt with stripes, yet my mercy I will not take from him, nor will I belie my faithfulness. Forever I will maintain my love for my servant. Gospel Acclamation Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia Jesus Christ became poor although he was rich so that by his poverty you might become rich. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Gospel Do not worry about tomorrow. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. Jesus said to his disciples, No one can serve two masters. He will either hate one and love the other, or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds in the sky. They do not sow or reap. They gather nothing into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are not you more important than they? Can any of you, by worrying, add a single moment to your life span? Why are you anxious about clothes? Learn from the way the wild flowers grow. They do not work or spin. But I tell you that not even Solomon, in all his splendor, was clothed like one of them. If God so clothes the grass of the field, 
which grows today and is thrown into the oven tomorrow, will he not much more provide for you, O you of little faith? So do not worry and say, What are we to eat? Or what are we to drink? Or what are we to wear? All these things the pagans seek. Your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be given you besides. Do not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Sufficient for a day is its own evil. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Meditation Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 In today's gospel, Jesus encourages his disciples not to worry about the essentials of life like food or clothing. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, he counsels, and all these things will be given you besides. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 But does this mean that if you simply say the right prayers, you'll have everything you need? No, God's care for you isn't like a contract where if you do this, God is obliged to do that. So what does it mean to seek first the kingdom? It means to seek Jesus himself. Seek him before all else, and as you do, he will change your attitude, your priorities, and even the things you worry about. He will help you to trust in his provision. What might this look like? Let's start with prayer. Even when praying seems more like a chore than a time of communion with God, He honors your efforts to worship Him. He changes your heart so that it reflects His own. He makes it humbler, simpler, more loving. And that affects everything else. It changes the way you relate to your family. You find joy in expecting not to be served at home, but to serve your family members. When you seek to love as Jesus loves, you create a loving environment in your home, where strained relationships can be healed. It changes the way you approach your work. You try to honor God whether or not you get rewarded for it. As you take the focus off yourself, your performance might even improve. It changes your perspective. You start to see with Jesus' eyes what you really need and what's not essential. With that new look, you might even realize you're the richest person in the world. So seek first God's kingdom and His righteousness. Because as you do, you will receive the blessing of becoming more and more like Jesus and sharing His love in every area of your life. Lord, help me to seek you above all things. Amen. We are God's hands, feet, and voice. May his peace rest upon you as you go and announce the gospel of the Lord in your words and deeds. Thank you for joining today. Abundant blessings upon you and yours. Amen. We close as always in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Hello, I'm Shirley, residential realtor for many years. As a professional, I welcome and encourage you to contact me whether you are buying or selling a home. Or if you know like-minded people like yourself that you want me to help guide through this overwhelming process. Whether in the Dallas Metroplex or across the country, I'd love to assist in your real estate needs. Click the link in the description below to land on my website for a plethora of real estate information. Thank you and blessings upon you and yours.